we're analyzing VG Properties stock ticker VICI to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for VG. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing VG for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand VG's stock performance. VG Properties currently trades for $32.78 per share. In the last year, their stock price is up 11.5%. This dramatically outperforms the S&P 500 over this time. In the last five years, VG Properties is compounding at just under 13% annually. Since being publicly listed about five and a half years ago, VG Properties is compounding at about 11% annually. VG Properties pays a large 4.66% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield throughout this time is in addition to these compounded annual returns. VG Properties trades snugly between their 52-week high and their 52-week low. A little under 3% of their shares are sold short. VG Properties has a $33 billion market cap. But why should we be paying close attention to VG Properties? VG Properties is a real estate investment trust based in the United States. It acts as an owner, acquirer, and developer of real estate assets across gaming, hospitality, entertainment, and leisure destinations. The company operates through real property and golf courses. VG's Properties National Geographically Diverse Portfolio consists of 29 gaming facilities featuring approximately 19,000 hotel rooms and more than 200 restaurants, bars, and nightclubs. Its properties are leased to industry-leading gaming and hospitality operators, including Caesars Entertainment, Century Casinos, Hard Rock International, Jack Entertainment, and Penn National Gaming, Inc. VG Properties also owns four championship golf courses and 34 acres of undeveloped land adjacent to the Las Vegas Strip. VG Properties' strategy is to create the nation's highest quality and most productive experiential real estate portfolio. The company has been in recent talks to acquire the real estate related to Six Flags. Introducing metric number one, we want their average return on equity in the last five years to be above 12%. The average publicly listed REIT earns about a 6% return on equity. By looking for a benchmark that's double this, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the quality of the business. VG Properties' return on equity has fluctuated throughout this time. They earned just about 6.5% returns on equity in their most recent fiscal year. Averaged out, they're earning about an 8.5% return on equity in a given year. That's a couple of percentage points above average but that's below that benchmark we're looking for, meaning this is an X on metric number one for VG properties. Metric number two, we're looking at growth. We want to see revenue and cash from operations growth in the last five years for VG properties. Both of these have to be up for this to be a check. During this time, VG properties has almost tripled their revenues and their cash from operations have nearly quadrupled. This is very large growth across the board here for VG. This is our first check of the day. So how did VG feel their growth? We're partially understanding that here in metric number three, where we're looking for shares outstanding to be decreasing in the last five years. This is not the case for VG. VG has has more than doubled their shares outstanding in the last five years alone, meaning this is an X on metric number three. Many real estate investment trusts tend to be externally funded. They either issue shares or take on more debt to fuel their growth, and Vici seems to be no exception here. Metric number four, we're putting our previous metrics together. Here we're looking for cash flow per share growth over the last five years for Vici. We learned their cash from operations have almost quadrupled, while the company has more than doubled their shares outstanding. Even with this dilution, they've grown their cash from operations faster than this, meaning the company's been growing on a per share basis. This is a check on metric number four. Coupling this with their above average returns on equity seems to be a good sign for Vici. Recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we're split evenly. We have two checks and two X's for VG properties. But there's still one vital piece missing. You might think nailing high returns on equity and having strong growth is the key, but we haven't touched on the one thing that I believe sets truly wonderful rates apart which is having these characteristics while using a moderate amount of debt. In metric number five, we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of cash from operations the business has produced in their last five years. During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We don't want to invest in overly levered businesses. VG has significantly increased their net debt position over this time. Currently, they have $14.3 billion in net debt, and in the last five years, VG has only produced $4.9 
$1.9 billion in cash from operations. It's worth understanding that the company has grown very rapidly during this time, so these cash flows could be understated compared to where they'd be at in the future. It still looks like VG is using a lot of debt relative to their cash from operations. This is an Exxon metric number five. If this is a potential concern for you, you'd want to dig in and understand the company's debt profile in more detail. They'll break this out in their filings. Because of the types of assets and properties that VG has, this may or may not be a concern compared to some other REITs. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average cash from operations to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will give a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it may offer a reasonable starting point for a fair value of Vici. Vici has a $47.7 billion total enterprise value. This takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. It gives us a perspective of Vici that's more similar to as if the business were a private company. We learned in their last five years, Vici has produced $4.9 billion in cash from operations, meaning in an average year, they produce $980 million in cash from operations. When we divide that by their total enterprise value, that gives us just about a 2% average cash from operations to enterprise value yield for Vici. On a current basis, the company has produced $1.9 billion dollars in cash from operations in their most recent fiscal year, dividing that by their $47.7 billion total enterprise value gives us about a 4% current cash from operations to enterprise value yield for Vici. Both of these are coming in below that risk premium we'd be seeking. This is an X on metric number six. You don't want to throw this business out in its entirety. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. It's not financial advice. You'll want to stick around as we perform our discounted cash flow analysis to come to a more concrete estimate of their fair intrinsic value before we give a final rating to the business. But first, let's not forget about our bonus metric. As our bonus, we're looking at Vici's dividend profile. Vici pays out that large 4.66% dividend yield currently. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. It's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to see if their dividends are well supported. For Vici, we want their dividends to be covered by their cash flows in all five of these years. And that's been the case. The company has increased their dividend payouts per share in all five years, and they've increased their cash flows per share over this time as well. They've maintained a reasonable payout ratio throughout. You'll want to keep in mind that the company does look like it's using quite a bit of debt, so this is something to pay attention to. In the last five years, though, it looks like Vici has adequately covered their dividend. While this isn't a guarantee for the future, it does look like Vici's dividend could be in healthy shape here. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze VG properties, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for VG properties. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. It's just like any model in any discipline, its outputs will be sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with an average of their free cash flows, then using historical growth assumptions to project these into the future. It's up to you to do your own homework to determine whether or not these will be accurate and applicable going forward. If we assume they grow their average cash flows at a rate of 1.6% annually for the next 10 years, then in the 10 years from there that these would decline at a rate of 2% annually, adding in their tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of their tangible net worth, if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments in addition to his margin of safety requirements, it looks like from today's valuations of Vici that a potential fair intrinsic value is around $35.5 per share. That's several dollars above the company's stock price currently. There are key factors to be mindful of here. Vici has not been publicly listed that long, so the company doesn't have the same track record that some other businesses do. It also has a low degree of business predictability, as it's been a very high growth company throughout this time. That could impact some of our assumptions. You'll want to be mindful that their dividend yield is included in this 15% rate of return. We would not be doubly counting their 4.66% dividend yield. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, consult with your investment or financial advisor. In analyzing Vici Properties Inc., stock ticker VICI, we learned the company earns returns on equity that are a couple percentage points above average, but below the benchmark we're looking for. Vici has strongly grown their revenues and their cash from operations in the last five years by issuing a lot of shares and taking on quite a bit of debt. It looks like their debt loads are more than their cash from operations can support. Again, though, the business has been a very high growth REIT, which is somewhat atypical, and they've very much so been externally funded. On both a current and an average basis of their cash from operations to their enterprise value, 
value yield. It did not look like those were giving the risk premium we'd be seeking in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury. VG Properties has grown their dividend payouts in all five of the last years. They've managed to support these with their cash from operations in all five years as well, as those have grown over this time too. Performing a discounted cash flow analysis, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions from today's valuations of VG Properties, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, it looks like an estimate of their fair intrinsic value is around $35.50 per share. That's a few dollars above their current stock price. It's worth reiterating this is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial or investment advisor. With all of the factors of our analysis in mind, it looks like Vici Properties is a strong candidate for further research. It could be an interesting business to dig into right now, especially given the uniqueness of the properties they own. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Vici Properties with me and have a great day.